I'm gonna move a bit gears. I know that you're a gamer. Uh, you used to spend a lot of time in World of Warcraft and other games, and you have a lot of this amazing uh, analogy that you do between the real life and leadership in real life and leadership also in games. So tell us a bit more about that. Okay, well, I think there's two things. One is I'm around the generation where below me, more than half of the people play games regularly. And above me, most of the people don't play games regularly. And so the managerial, the percentage of your managers that are going to be gamers is quite high at around this age level. Um, I don't know about the Arab world, but I think it's around similar. And so the metaphors that we learn in games is a very good communication device. And people who have played games understand quests, understand groups, understand especially MMORPGs. So they understand the idea of figuring out what resources. This is a powerful. Like you get online and you see who's online, what are the tasks that I need to do, let's put a team together, let's go. And, and it's also these like re, um, rapid um, uh, feedback systems of like you did something good, you get a badge, you know. And, and then the other part is leadership. So like in, in my guild, I have like eight-year-old kids leading a 25 person raid for three hours and they understand very quickly how important it is to keep morale up and stuff like that So I find that the young kids who have played um, MMORPGs uh, make pretty good managers and recently in Harvard Business Review uh, JSB John City Brown's been writing a lot about this and he would rather hire uh, World of Warcraft um, a High level raid leader than an MBA. He actually wrote that you know. um, um, but, but, but there's a lot of actually really interesting management studies and, and so sociology studies around. Again, it's, 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 a certain, it's, not, it's a very thin slice that's actually being used for the management stuff. But, and there's a lot to learn from it. But, but the key thing, I think, is I, I always believe in, in culture beats strategy. I mean, Drucker says culture eats strategy for breakfast. And if you, if you have a good guild that's um, very, very strong with, with culture, the, the, you'll see the people who have put the culture together. They're going to be very good community leaders. And more and more as you push innovation to the edges, you have to empower the people in your organization. And it becomes less about strategy and control and much more about empowering people but retaining. I gave an example earlier, but like Francis Ford Coppola says, good movies and bad movies, the only difference is whether everyone is making the same movie in their head. And it's about whether everybody has the same culture because you can't control everyone. But you, if you can manage everyone to be making the same movie in their head, the movie's going to be great. And, and that's, uh, that kind of thing is something you learn in managing a group on a game, but you don't learn kind of just through um, um, the traditional top-down management. Uh, what about also communication tools and communication? Yeah, and that's another thing. I think, like, again, certain category games, we have this always-on push to talk. And so, like, Skype, for instance, you know, you could use it for push to talk. You could have it on all the time. And when you play, like, when, like World of Warcraft in the old days was 40 people. So we would have 40 people on a conversation eight hours a day every day. And so then all the kids get used to being in a room where it's connected to 40 people. And then, but still everyone says Skype is hello, okay, goodbye. I mean, that's kind of like, that's so old fashioned. It's like paper letters. You know, when you're playing with, with 40 people and in a raid doing push to talk, you know, like, for instance, when the healing job is on and the healer's on, everybody backs off, okay? And then the raid leader comes on and says, hey, guys, we, we got to go left. And the, somehow, and it's kind of like also that you find military people are good at this, too. They know how to use the radio, and it's always on, and, you, and they immediately prioritize who has pr press priority on a given channel. And they, and they keep, like, when I was playing actively, I had my um, channel of my guild on my stereo all the time, so I could always hear them talking. And this always on internet, you, a lot of that kind of interaction ability, because it's about taking pause, like if there's a 30, like a three second pause, it's okay for a junior person to talk, but if it's only a one second pause, a senior person talks, I and mean, there's like this kind of see, dynamic that you learn in using these real time tools, which, which just making the tool available didn't, hasn't been created. Yeah, I, I mean, for example, for us, we're a small team at Wamda, we use always WhatsApp. We are 10 people on WhatsApp, uh, Roland Daher, when he's, you know, kid starts walking, he takes a picture, he sends it to everyone, so it's work for work, it's also for, for, for a team, and builds a lot of, of, of bonding together. Fadi, tell us more about the leadership style that you find work very well for startups, and as, as tips for entrepreneurs in, in terms of leadership style and communication to your team, and empowering your team to, uh, to thrive. So I haven't done a startup in a long time myself, but I would suggest that startups have to think in teams all the time. So uh, where leadership is, is, is is interchangeable at any time, depending as just like Joy uh, said now. So it's not about seniority only, but it's about who is go doing that thing, the, who is focusing on that thing so that everybody pulls back and says, okay, you're gonna lead now. So the concept of leadership 
is not the owner or the CEO, but it's the guy with the knowledge at that moment in time that is going to actually go out and implement that something. That's, that's my view of it. So uh, if a team is able to do that, and if a team is, uh, and that requires a high level of knowledge among all the team members and high, a high level of, uh, of understanding each other's capabilities. So that even if you, um, uh, because you need to take instantaneous, uh, instantaneous action at certain moments in time and you need to take immediate decisions. So what you do is you say, okay, Muhammad, you are, uh, this is yours, voluntarily. It's not like, it's not a long, deliberation process that says okay who are thinking and there's no time and, and there's it's a waste of time to do meetings immediately it is known this guy is going to take the lead and he is going to lead it so so the concept of leadership uh, needs to be completely flattened uh, not in layers but flattened completely especially at the very early stage now as you build the business and there is layers of people and more people come in you need to also um, see how you can continue to have that culture of flattening uh, uh, and a virtual hier hierarchy at the same time. So there's always a boss at the end of the day when, 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 when push comes to shove, somebody has to take a decision, a guy, we know, all know who's going to take that decision. But in the day-to-day -day work and when you are out in the, in the field, when you're out in the battlefield uh, uh, to take, uh, you know, Joy's uh, uh, example, uh, there is always, it could be the lowest uh, and, and, and the guy that is in touch with that, with that situation that takes the decision. So for us, in the very early days, for instance, in Aramex, we used to say, our frontliners are our heroes. So it took us a long time to even understand what that means. I mean, is it the courier that actually delivers the package that is more important than the CEO or the guy that actually sits in his office and becomes the manager? How important is it that this guy is able to answer the client when he touches him on the spot? And then he becomes a leader right then and there. So he, he, he's not really a leader, but he is a leader. Because, uh, and we see that on Twitter all the time, you I mean, you answering and... And, you... and that's part of the culture that we do. So I'm, I'm, I'm not a customer service person, but if somebody is going to ask a question, I'm going to take the lead on it. Yeah. Immediately. I'll become, a, I'll become a, call, a part of the call center. Right. Uh, so, I, and I will take a back seat, so, uh, because I don't know the answer. What I'll do is I'm gonna, uh, I will answer and say, okay, I'll, uh, you know, I'm on it. But what does that mean, I'm on it, is there's, a, there's already a system between me and some of the customer service people. When I say I'm on it, somebody is actually else on it because <laughs> <laughs> they'd better be. Uh, because at the end of the day, when people are asking you a question on Twitter, you need to answer right then and there. Because, I mean, this is an instantaneous world. This is instant gratification. And he will immediately hate you on the spot. If I don't answer him after an hour, he says, you know, you're, if, if you go on, if you do go uh, at Fadi G, so you will find a lot of people saying, you know, your company sucks. You're, uh, or somebody would say, ah, you know, I didn't know the CEO answers. Well, well the CEO does answer. So, yeah. and, and so this is an interchangeable process. And, and everybody in the system needs, it's a, it's a corporate culture that you need to create. And, and startups have to be aware of it all the time. Don't ever think of structures because they're gonna delay you. You're gonna have to be fluid, you're gonna have to be agile, and you're gonna have to be interchangeable in your capabilities.